kept going one way, one way, one way. I thought, right. And then in the end, I sort of got a little bit like careless sort of thing because I didn't find no freaky power. I didn't find no, like, I didn't, I didn't find something in there that really shocked me, you know. I kept going one way, one way, one way. I thought, right. And then in the end, I sort of got a little bit like careless sort of thing because I didn't find no freaky power. I didn't find no, like, I didn't, I didn't find something in there that really shocked me, you know. What's good, family? So mash the like button, subscribe, and lick off the bell. So we just heard there from your man's down bad Billy, Billy down bad, Billy the bottom, Saunders. Ah, <laughs> oh, you know what? We've spent how many months? He got turned out on international TV. He got broke back mountain tooed. Yeah, he got Shawshank Redemption prison shower scened. On May 10th, 2021. It's now September the 17th. So what, yeah, four months. Four and a half months. This goofy was away for. And i got to tell you, in them four months, most of us, man, spent a lot of time saying, oh, when's Billy Ho going to come back? We want Billy back. Ra, 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 ra. But then, now he's back. And I've heard the shocker, the shockiness that this 40-minute interview was. I wish he stayed away, honestly. Now, for me, people who follow the channel, you'll know that I've felt a lot of frustration recently. You've got Tommy Fury knocking about. You've got Tyson Fury knocking about. John Fury, none of them. All these Muppets, none of them fighting, all of them talking. The last thing I needed, and it makes kind of sense, to be fair, that Billy would come back right now, because that's how life always works. Whenever you're, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it always piles on. Now he's back. And you know what? Again, I, I, I knew, hand on my heart, I knew this was going to happen, but I did have a bit of hope inside me that maybe he's gone away and maybe he's kind of, he's taking his time up to really reflect. Maybe he's had one of them, what's one of them ones? You know, them, them near, them, maybe he's had one of them near death experiences. Yeah? Billy, he survived his Me Too. You understand? He survived his Me Too and Surviving Canelo Alvarez. Uh, Billy Ho's just finished doing a documentary series called Surviving Canelo Alvarez. And uh, talking about, basically, just, I'll just give you man a quick, I might do a video on this in its own right, but just give you man a, a drop on this before we carry on. Yeah, I've heard today from one of my Netflix executive dons that Billy Ho just finished, or sorry, maybe just signed, finished signing the contract for his Surviving Canelo Alvarez documentary series and basically it's just going to chronicle the abuse he took in the ring so that's what it is but make sure obviously you, you kids can't watch it it's 18 because he goes into quite a lot of detail about how about what canelo did to his ring and all this kind of stuff so yeah let's give you a man drop anyway but listen let's carry on like i was saying i had a bit of hope four months away four months of radio silence maybe he'd had well tail lie. I'm saying maybe he had a near-death experience. <laughs> we know he had a near-death experience. But nonetheless, I guess what I'm talking about, maybe after his near-death experience, maybe he had some sort of epiphany. And then he was coming out of that for four months. And maybe he was going to come back and be like, you know what, guys, truth is, I've been watching the YB's videos. And he's right. I got turned out. I talked all this rubbish... For X amount of months, or, or for my whole career, I talked all this rubbish. I trolled other fighters. I swanned around like I was a real bare knuckle hard ass. And truth is, I got hit once and didn't want no more. I got hit once and I saw my whole life flash before me. And I realised I don't want none of this. So I went back to my corner. I pulled Ben into me and I begged him ear to ear to drag me out because I was down bad that's the truth and I know I'm gonna get troll I know I'm gonna get I know I'm gonna get B U L L Y for this I know I'm gonna get trolled for this but I've just got to speak my truth right now because I've got a Netflix documentary coming out and that's gonna talk about the abuse I suffered yeah that's gonna, that's gonna basically chronicle my whole Me Too story that's what he could have done Oh, no, no, no. Not Billy Ho. In true Billy Ho fashion. And you know what? I can't even blame Billy Ho at this point. 
And the more time goes on, the more I hear people like John Scary, Tyson Scary, and Tommy Scary, all the Scary family, the more I hear these people carry on, the more I've started to realise the real problem. Because yes, of course they are a problem, but the real problem, you know, is the media. That's the bottom line here, people. Because in every instance, never once does a media dude step up and call them out. Never once. Never once. In fact, they actually kind of put their hand into the middle and just start stroking something. That's what they do. Close their eyes, put their hand in the middle and just start stroking. If in doubt, the stroke. That's the. I'm pretty sure. I spot. I've got some. I've got one of my um, IFL TV dons, and they said they've been they've been given a script. IFL TV and all them is that boxing establishment dons have been told. Listen, if in doubt, close your eyes, and just start stroking the person you're interviewing off. Why be you lying? Why be you not? You, you made it up. Why be? What are you talking about? IFL TV interviewers don't stroke off the fighters they're interviewing. Oops. What you mean, the goofy who was interviewing Billy Ho today, or the other day. He said, oh yeah, Billy, you know, the thing is, a lot of, a lot of UK fighters have gone over to Alvarez, but you, you undoubtedly did the best out of the lot. What? You did the best out of the lot. You got splattered and jacked in round eight. What are you talking about? Now, don't get me wrong. Callum Smith, yeah? Listen. I think he, I think he could have done more, truth be known. But what we do know is he had one arm and didn't quit, and he went the distance. So what are you talking about? Billy did the best, and that's my point, people. You can yeah, we can blame yeah, we can hold Billy accountable. But these guys, their work, they actually add to it. It's one thing, yeah. And even this, in my opinion, isn't acceptable when people sit there and shill. Sorry, when people sit there and say nothing. But that would be one way of interviewing. Some One interviewing style is sit there and let them talk rubbish. To the YB, that's also unacceptable. However, there's levels to this stroking offness. Yeah? IFL TV operate the highest level of stroking off. They stay stroking. Proper. They love stroking. I've seen less stroking in Amsterdam. That's how much they stroking. Love it. 100%. Oh, gassing bit. Oh, you were the best. You were the best UK fighter. It wouldn't be so bad if it was close, but Billy was literally the worst. Of all of them, he's the worst. I mean, what's that dude? Callum. Callum got hit a few times and jacked. And got back up. Billy didn't even get put down, but still jacked. Do you understand? Billy didn't even get put down and f found a way out ASAP. And an interviewer, rather than just sitting there, I'm not being funny here, it's not like Billy Ho wasn't already talking mad rubbish. It's not like the interviewer's thinking, well, Billy's, we're having a bit of a boring interview here, let me gas Billy up a bit. Billy was already having a whale of a time gassing the place up. The interview, the last thing the interview needed was more gas. Oh, well, Billy, the thing is, you was the number one UK fighter ever to fight Alvarez, so you got to you got to hang your hang your head high. You've got to hang your head high for jacking. But like I said, this is the state of the media today. The strokier. That's what we're going to call it from now. It's not called the media. It's called the strokier because they say stroking. They ain't media. Media implies a two-way kind of thing. Sent two-way. This way, they, they, what these guys do is one way, and it's the way of the stroke. They stay stroking. Yeah? These men wouldn't know interview or wouldn't know back and forth if it slapped them in their head. The only thing that's going back and forth is their hand. Stroking. Simple as that. Or their mouth, my God forbid. Yeah? Umar was... He was stroking. Yeah, listen. Doing the, mouth, doing, doing the most mouth stroking. 100%. Anyway, let's get to the video because I've been gassing the place up for God knows how many minutes already. So, you've seen the title of this video. Billy Ho claims he didn't feel anything special. Billy Ho claims he didn't feel anything special. Wow. And again, I'm glad I spent 10 minutes pre-logging this because it's relevant. Why be? How's your pre-log about stroking people off relevant? What do we know? 
Billy Ho has just sat there in a fight when he got hit once clean and jumped out. And he's had the audacity to say, I didn't feel anything strong. I didn't feel anything work. I didn't feel anything to write home about. But you didn't make it to the end of the fight, Billy. And you found a way out in the eighth round. I don't know about you, man, yeah, but if I'm in a fight and I'm not troubled by anything, I'm making it to the end of the fight. Jacking and quitting in round eight is the definition of having trouble. It's the definition of, damn, I didn't expect this. Damn, he powerful. Damn, I don't want no more of that. Like I said, interviewers have a job. Or oh, sorry, Billy has a job. His job is to maintain his brand. He believes in order to maintain his brand, he must keep lying. And keep the charade going. That said, interviewers are supposed to be independent. You're supposed to call him out. Billy, you've just said that you didn't feel anything powerful, so how, why did the fight stop? I'm not, and I get it. People say things like, well, I'll be, you, you ain't going to get another interview. But there's a way of going, going about things. I'm not saying you need to go as deep as me and say, listen, Billy. Alvarez turned you out on international TV. What are you talking about? They weren't no power. But you can do things a smart way. Like, okay, Billy, that's interesting. You said that he's got he's got he's not got much power. So, in round nine, why didn't you go back in there for some more no power? Isn't it? In round nine, what was stopping you jumping, jumping back in there to fight, some, to fight some more of the dude with no power? Because what we know is, when you was in there with Andy Lee and a bunch of dudes who we know have no power, you was there for it. Willie Monroe, Bummy Monroe. What we know is when Billy Ho Saunders is in there with certified dudes with no power, Billy was there for it. Isn't that interesting? Billy had no problem finishing them fights, fighting slappers. The minute he's in there with someone who digs, he, he, he don't want no more. Oh, but don't tell me, Umar. That's a coincidence, right? That's just whatever. Billy, what Billy says is true, and it's because I don't know what, I don't know what his excuse was for not making. Oh, what? Well, that was it. He got injured, and uh, it's one of them ones. He couldn't help it. Oh, uh, oh, it's uh, your injury. No, you didn't get injured. You got bruised, and you didn't want no more. That's it. Your eye wasn't closed. You got a little bruise, and you jumped out. And the worst thing is about this whole thing, people, by the way, Chris Eubank, publicly now, has aired out Billy Ho about his eye injury. And guess what? Guess what didn't happen? In fact, I'm going to do a video on that. But just quickly, guess what didn't happen? Billy Ho didn't come back and say, Chris, you're wrong. Chris, how dare you slander my name? I'll see you in court. Or better yet, scrap the court. Boom. Here's the proof. Here's my x-rays. Here's this. Here's that. Oops. Isn't that what you do? If your character was brought into question. That is what, that is what you'd do. If it, if it was genuine. But he ain't got no x-rays. Because all he had was a bruise. Oops. So that in itself is the ultimate proof. And the thing is. IFL TV and all the goofies, they won't even dare ask him that question. Billy, where's the x-rays at? Billy, how come he was driving around cutting up learner drivers a week after? Billy, how was you able to fly back within 48 hours after you had touch and go eye surgery? Billy, how was they able to operate 24 hours after the, f after the fight when you're supposed to have loads of swelling? And the, and the surgeons need time for the swelling to go down first. Oops. None of these questions are being done. Now we know why. MTK hang at the back of Coogan. Yeah? MTK's second home is in Coogan's backside. 100% confirmed. That's where they are. That's where he is at home. Coogan loves it. Yeah? No doubt. 100%. Billy... You got smoked. And everyone knows it. Apart from the few shill fans you've got. Everyone knows you got your boots smoked. And your your own kin know it. Yeah, your kids know it. Yeah, they'll look yeah they yeah, you'll laugh, but they don't look at you the same way. That's that's the truth. They know now 
all that stuff you talk ain't worth nothing. You, they've, they've grown up for 10 years hearing you rabbit on about how hard you are. And you got hit once and folded. Yeah? Folded. Like a big bubbly B.I.H. Which is what you are. Because Alvarez made a big B.I.H. out of you. That's what he did do. Yeah? It's quite, it's quite ironic all these years Billy Ho has kind of taken the mick out of women and whatnot. Guess what? <laughs> That's that karma for you, because Alvarez made a good old sarf out of you. Yeah, you best believe that as well. <laughs>